You know, we had a guest on um, certainly right after the launch of that Cybertruck saying this is essentially a halo truck. It's not expected to generate a lot of revenue. It's the good shining object that Tesla wants to get new consumers in through the door to buy their other cars. How should we be looking at this? Look, um, first, it's incredibly controversial. And we had a, an incredibly robust response to our survey. <clears throat> it was interesting to hear that two thirds didn't want it. And frankly, that was a lot better than we expected. I mean, across my family, it's polarizing. I personally love it. My wife doesn't like it at all. My two daughters are split. Uh, Leanne, who works on our team, doesn't like it. Pino likes it. And it, it, it kind of makes people feel all sorts of different things, just kind of like the CEO of the company. Um, you know, we did a survey, like I said, that revealed that this split was there, but we also spent a lot of time looking at the reviews and trying to understand the underlying technology of the vehicle. And it's incredible. I mean, this is the first company in the world to move to a 48 volt architecture, which enables something called uh, rear wheel steering done by drive by wire or steer by wire, which means that there's no hand over hand steering over where anymore. You can basically do 170 degree turns with your steering wheel and completely maneuver the vehicle. It's remarkable what the company has been able to do underneath the surface, despite the controversial uh, steel exoskeleton. So it's good. We think it'll sell up to a quarter million over the next uh, couple of years, maybe over time, half a million. And you know it, it'll move the PNL, but what's more interesting is the way the company continues to move technology forward. Hey, George Pross here. So, do you think? Uh, how you doing, man? So, do you think that one of the main reasons why potentially there was some negativity towards it in terms of your survey was because of pricing? Pricing was a bit more uh, expected than what people had seen at least originally. And, and then, secondly, touching on the under the skin features, do you think that'll actually help? Uh, sentiment if people learn more about that 48 volt system, that rear wheel, wheel steering system, things like that under that kind of controversial skin? So I think the two thirds that didn't like it yet, we, our, sim, our survey was very simple. Would you buy Cybertruck? But if you ask me based on the discussions that I've had individually, which have been probably in the hundreds, it's really the look of the vehicle that either gets people excited or revolts people. You know, it's, a, it's really controversial. And it's different. And you know, the future should look like look like the future according to Elon Musk. It it excites me. It revolts my wife, for example. So I think it has everything to to do with the way the vehicle looks. Uh, what was your second question again, Pros? I was basically asking about um, mentioning the, the 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 fact that the under the under the skin features are those going to help sort of uh, improve buying sentiment if people understand what's going on with the the forty eight volt architecture and things like that. Totally. I mean, look, uh, it has stuff that you have to get used to, right? There's no uh, rear view mirror. There's an enormous uh, uh, real, uh, I'm sorry, front uh, windshield wiper. There's an enormous windshield. This is all different. You know, I haven't, I've seen the vehicle in person. I haven't driven it, but based on the reviews that I've seen, people sort of like it, you know, and also it's incredibly fast, right? It beats a Porsche 911 off the line while carrying a Porsche 911. So I think the technology is going to get people excited. It's different the same way the iPhone was different, uh, different when it first came out, but it's got incredible stuff underneath the hood, so to speak. So George, sort of looking at Tesla big picture here, you know the, the truck you might see is having about 250,000 unit sales down the line. Um, and then below the $80,000, you could get that uh, federal tax credit. Uh, we're hearing now that Tesla is, is anticipating that it's gonna lose half that credit for its Tesla Model 3 because of the new rules that Treasury put in place for entities of concern. What's your thoughts on that? And do you think it really, will it sort of hurt the brand there or can they actually work around it and, and maybe uh, source some different battery materials for that car? It, it's a great question. So look, the government is trying to do the right thing here, right? They're trying to induce companies to create a battery manufacturing <laughs> infrastructure in the United States. And currently some of Tesla's vehicles use batteries from China. You know, despite all their efforts to make batteries here in the U.S., and Tesla has been leading that for many, many years, they still use batteries, we think, from CATL in China. Uh, at the end of the day, what really matters here, is, in, in our opinion, for the stock, is what they guide to for next year. There's 
a lot of negative sentiment with regard to what the volumes will look like in 2024. We're at 2.3 million in and in around. You know, there's a lot of whisper out there that they'll be in the low twos. And what this uh, this does, the, the the lack of an incentive is potentially create an air pocket in the first quarter. Maybe it means that the fourth quarter estimates or the the uh, actual volumes are really good because people rush to the store, rush online to buy their Tesla, leaving a little bit of an air pocket. So uh, we'll see how this all shakes out. But at the end of the day, what really matters globally, can Tesla sell 2.3 million plus or minus vehicles next year? And for now, we think the answer is yes. And George, when we factor in the Cybertruck here, Musk himself says it'll take 12 to 18 months before this new vehicle is, quote, a significant positive cash flow contributor. Is this more about sort of the, the halo effect for the brand, getting people into perhaps some of the cheaper models, or is this really targeted at a very sort of small base of early adopters and, and Musk supporters when you think about the Cybertruck and who's investing in it? That's a great question. And, you know, it's not that cheap, right? Like Pras pointed out, it's you know, upwards of uh, the, the the version that's currently available is a hundred thousand dollars, and so it's not that you're not going to get significant volume like like the Model Three or the Model Y. But there's so much interesting technology there that number one, it creates the ha halo effect that you're referring to, and over time, as the sixty thousand dollar version comes out, we think it actually will drive volume, and it, as you can sell it globally, right now it's limited to the U.S. or maybe North America, uh, but over time, you know, they get to quarter million maybe half a million, but it's an exciting vehicle that looks different, obviously incredibly controversial. I know some people have called it an art piece that and Elon Musk should just stop production because it's so hard to make. Look, if they're gonna, in our opinion, they're gonna pull it off. They're, it'll initially result in a halo effect. Then look at some of the viral videos on the internet. People are stopping to look at the vehicle on the street. You know, what, when was the last time that happened with a car? 